Hi everyone, it's Diane Evans with StampinWithDiane.com. I'm an independent Canadian Stampin' Up! demonstrator here in the interior of British Columbia. So if this is one of your first times joining me, welcome. I'm so glad that you have found me. Whether you found me through Facebook or through YouTube, just remember if you are through YouTube, make sure you're subscribed, hit that bell, and you'll get notified immediately. So welcome to my Tuesday Live. Every Tuesday I do a technique technique Tuesday and you know sometimes it, it is really hard to come up with different techniques um, but I came across this it was really funny it kind of came into my feed and I apps I'm so excited about um, showing this to you I actually showed it to um, a team meeting um, on Sunday but I wanted to show you this and you know what, if you're here from before and you've seen this technique, please keep it quiet because I'm doing part two on this technique. And it's really, really important that I give that particular wow to, this, to the same people that follow me um, on Facebook or on, on um, YouTube. Well, this one, there's lots of different names for it, but I was so excited when I saw it that I just had to share it. And I probably shouldn't have shared it on Sunday. I probably should have shared it with you guys first, but that's okay. A lot of those people that were there on Sunday are usually ones that come here as well. So I'm going to call this the color and drag embossing folder technique. There's people that have called it magical embossing folder technique. And it really, when, when you start seeing this actual um, technique, you'll see how easy it really is. You do need a 3D embossing folder and you need um, a deep one with um, different images on it. It's very important that you have that. But you know what? Um, when I show you the second technique, you'll go, whoa, that'll work with that as well. But a 3D embossing folder is the best. And the best ones for this, um, is this one here and it's a brand new one um the layered florals um one but also this painted posies i love this one and i'll show you an example with that um i've done something with this but that's more for the second one and then there's the ferns as well but this is such a neat simple but neat very cool technique um i was so happy when it did drop into my feet so you guys get to see it first Hello, Felicia. Okay, so um, it, it's really important, like I say, that it's a 3D embossing folder. Um, now, you would emboss this either on basic white or very vanilla. On this particular one that I'm going to show you, it works and looks the best um, with um, very vanilla. I will show you one done with basic white, and you'll see that it's just effective. Um, it just depends what look that you want with it. So what, what you're going to do, and oh my goodness, I didn't even do this. I can't believe I didn't do this. So what you're going to do is we are going to take this embossing folder, and it's very vanilla, and I'm just going to run that through. I can't believe I didn't do that. I was over there playing with it. All right, so bit of a time out there, and I apologize for that. All right, so all you're going to do, <laughs> hello. So like I say, if you've seen this, please limit your um, samples on my Facebook group. If you do put the second part of this um, this tutorial or this technique on, on the Facebook group, I will remove it until I show that, and that's in two weeks' time. I actually have my techniques for the next five weeks. I've got them all printed out, not completely printed out because I haven't got the samples done, but I've got them so that they're printed out so that I know exactly what I'm going to do. And that just allows for preparation. Um, I am going to the Netherlands on the 6th, but I want to make sure that I have my two techniques and my two, um, um, my two techniques and my two sketches done for that at least. I'm not going to worry about the other ones. Now, the important part with this, you have an embossed side. Oops, you know what? I'm not even down. Oh my goodness, let's get down. All right, so like I say, it works really good with 3D embossing folders. I'm using the layered florals one. This one I think gets the best results 
but the painted posies gets amazing results as well. So when you run this through, you have an embossed side and you have a debossed side. We are going to play with the debossed side. Now remember, this is called a color. So what we're going to do is I'm going to take my blending brushes. And you know, honestly, I've seen people, uh, actually when they were showing this tech, when they did samples of this technique, that they were so particular where they, they put their color. It is not necessary because I will show you how, how it works. All right, so I'm gonna take, and I'm not changing up the wheel from last Sunday. I am gonna take some bubble bath. And I've got my small blending brush. And I'm gonna come in and I'm just going to just color on here. Of course, my dog wants to go out now. You know what, I swear she knows. It, it's just like, you know, when you're on a phone and how your kids used to always um, go and um, they would um, start bothering you. Well, that's what my dog's like. So we're just going to have to listen to that because it's not like she has to go outside. I think this one is one of the deepest. And yes, you do get some pretty amazing looks from this particular one. So like I say, I'm just thinking where would the lighter color be? So the lighter color will be kind of on the tip parts of this. Actually, if this is... Uh, um, magnolia it's probably more the opposite but you know what honestly it's not going to matter that much with this so I'm going to come in and do some of these colors and I am not paying too much attention to this remember this is not important how this part really goes on here yeah you might be a little um want to know um you know have it in certain spots but we want it more in the debossed side. The raised side at this point is not that big of a deal. So let me go and let's go a little bit more. And then I'm gonna come in with some Moody Mauve. Yes. So I'm just gonna come in and let's put a bit of that down here. And like I say, when I tried this, and I just quickly tried it with um, the basic white, and it looks much better with um, the very vanilla. Now, i got to remember that there's leaves on here, too. And let's see. And like I say, if it really bothers you that it's kind of messy like this, um, go ahead and take more time with it. But honestly, I think the more random you are with this, the prettier it looks. All right. So then I'm going to come in. And even though some of them aren't going to be leaves, I'm just going to come in and color the leaf part. Can we have green leaf, uh, green flowers? Of course we can. But I'll come here and let's get the green on there. And then I'll come back in with the other colors. So like I say, I'm not paying too much attention to this. Let's see what else have I got. Some more green over here on the leaves. And I think it'd be really good if it's a lot darker. So I'm just going to come in and get some more darker on there. Let's see. And then let's come back in and let's do some more of the um, bubble bath. Ah, Cindy, you got me live. And thank you for sharing. I really do appreciate that. Remember, if you do like this, and I think you're going to like this once it's all done. And remember, this is the deboss side, not the embossed side, the deboss side. And I'm just going to come in and just some more Rococo, uh, not Rococo, rules, oh my goodness, Shades of the Past. This is going to be the Moody Mauve or Moody Mauve.
There we go. So it kind of looks like a hot mess, doesn't it? Well, you just wait. Okay, then the second part to this is the drag part. So here we have this, and I, I know I'm going to need a post-it note. I want to save my fingers with this part here. But I'm going to come in with some memento. Now, I've gone ahead. Remember all, always with memento that you store upside down because you want to keep your ink to the top of the pad, right? So you want to come in and you want to re-ink your pad. I always say buy a re-inker. Now, this could be done with a regular stamp pad. Um, but I want to show you with this because I like the effect of this. Very, very important that it is a very well inked um, memento pad. Now, this is the second part. It's called the drag. Now, just, we're just going to take this like this. I didn't get a big enough piece, but it's okay if it goes onto there. So just going to take it and drag. Is that not amazing? See how that just works on there? So I'm just going to go there and drag it some more. Just like that. Now this is where I'm going to need it. The post-it note. And I'm just going to take this and drag it. And I'll move it around. Now. You can leave this with the streaks in it. And I'll show you what that looks like. So isn't that pretty even with the streaks in there? Now, what you can do is you could come in and you could get it a little bit more. So depending on the look that you want, look, I'm not using that post-it note and I'm gonna be regretting it in a bit. So just like that. How simple is that, right? So it just shows you that just with simple coloring, you never know that I was outside those lines, right? You would never, ever know that. And then because I cut this, I cut this a quarter sheet because I didn't know how close I was going to get to the edges. Oh, uh, no, this is so neat. So I think I'm going to cut this three and three quarters. So I'm going to cut off some off of both ends. I guess you could use these parts if you want as trim. So this one's going to be three and three quarters by five. And I just want to make sure that those end pieces are covered, right? And I did pretty good going up to the edges there. So I'm actually okay to just cut this right here. So it's still a little bit damp. So see how simple that is? That just just brings that out now remember I used the colors I used were bubble bath so we can just put that right on there like that I'm just now see through here and then I'm just going to put this on here now if you used it on the embossed side the black would hit the embossed part, right? And just like that. And then I used some of that Moody Mauve and I went with a regular piece, which is five and a half by eight and a half, scored at four and a quarter. And we're gonna think about that. Now, originally what I did on the weekend was, and you know what, I wonder where they are now. I went and I did it on white, on a label on white, but I thought I'd just cut two of these in black because I thought it would look kind of neat on, on a black. And no, I can't find it. I wonder if they're over by my desk here. So let me just quickly check. I'm gonna quickly cut one. See, I did cut them out, so I'm not sure what happened there. Anyways, I'll just do it with my mini cut and emboss. 
So these are the thoughtful expressions and they have some beautiful labels in there. That's for sure. And I just have a scrap piece of black and we'll just run it through my mini cut and boss. And yes, of course, I'm going to emboss on it, right? So I use my level, I mean, my number three plate. I just find it works better than the number one. And let's just put that through. Don't know where that went to. It's one of those days, that's for sure. I've been in and out on Zooms, off Zooms, in conferences all day today. So been a great day. All right. So then I'm just going to come in. Oh, we better put that away so I don't lose it. And I really like there's an expression that says, um, thank you so much. So I'm just going to come and I'm going to put it on the black with white. And if I wanted to, to pick up one of these colors, I could color over top of that, but I'm not going to. So in a couple of weeks, I'm going to show you another one that's a variation of this one. Let's just put that on there. <coughs> Excuse me. And we'll just come in with our white embossing powder. So this is called the color and drag, which makes sense. You color it and you drag it, right? So just gonna come in there. Oh, that's gonna look funny. That'll be okay. That's why I usually cut two of them so that if I mess up, I can do it again. So I'll just quickly emboss this. The part is pretty plain, but I think the whole effect itself um, is pretty cool. You wait till I show you one that I did with um, Orchid Oasis. It's really pretty as well. All right, so this is just going to go on here. It's going to be a pretty simple card. See how that's just going to go like that. And I thought about putting ribbon on it, but you know what? I think I'm just going to tie a bow on it. That's how simple it's going to be. So let's pop that up. We're going to do that with the black dimensional. And let's put this right onto here. And we can finish the inside of the card. Um, I think what would go really good on the inside of this card would be that Magnolia Mood um, stamp just done on the inside and colored with these same colors. So this will be put on at 9.05 tomorrow on my Facebook group, which is right down below here. There'll be a link to the Facebook group. Now, if I wanted to, I guess I could have brought out the, the, um, the different colors of the ink that were on there as well. Let's just go like this. We have a really tight, quiet group today. That's just going to go on there. This ribbon is so pretty. It did carry over white and silver ribbon, which is really nice that it did carry over because I think it's so versatile because you can sit there and color with all different colors. All right, so let's just do this. Now we want to put on some gems because I think this can afford some gems on it. So I have some different ones that we could pick from. And I kind of have them here. And then I want to show you the, that other alternative. So I have a bunch of different gems. This is bubble bass. So let me just go in and I'll just show you kind of what this would look like. Doesn't quite go with this. And the reason being is because we've kind of muted those colors off. This won't go. This is berry burst. It might go. Yeah, that would be okay. I thought also these ones here would go. 
But I think maybe what might be good on this one is some the iridescent rhinestones. These rhinestones, do you find the big ones are really, really big? But I think with this particular background, it would work. Let me just put another one there. And one of these, and we'll put that one right on there. Pretty simple card, but pretty, pretty um, amazing, right? Very quick. Do you know how many you could pump out? Like, unbelievable. You may have to keep your re-inker around for a bit. Thank you, Marlene. Now, check this one out. And like I say, I can't wait to show you the ones. Uh, I'll show you this one. This was done. Now, this, you can see the two of them. This one's a little bit more muted. So I tried this with the brayer and it has to work with the new brayer. It doesn't quite work with the other speedball brayer that we used to have. And the reason being is that one's too hard, but this is more muted off. This is quite bright. I know that's kind of hard to tell there, but check this one out. This is with the painted posies. And so I will tell you what colors I used. I used um, Orchid Oasis. I know it looks really different, doesn't it? I used Orchid Oasis. I used Parakeet Party on there. And this is Flirty Flamingo. But what a great card. Imagine that on a Flirty Flamingo. Actually, I think I got a Flirty Flamingo. Look at that on Flirty Flamingo. Oh, my goodness. Um, I actually have a card or a base that you could cut this down a bit and see what I mean by not going to the edge there, but you could cut that down and look at how pretty I would actually take on this particular card. I think I would take the Orchid Oasis. This is just my thought. It almost looks like a blue, but see, look at that Orchid Oasis on there and then put it on a Flirty Flamingo card. Or you could do it the opposite way, or you could do this you could, you could um, have this matted like this, and it could go on a black card as well. I mean, the possibilities are just amazing. So, I mean, I hope you like that. I hope you're excited about that as much as I was when I saw it and then just had to share it with you. Like I say, in two more weeks' time, I'm going to show you another couple of ways that you could do this same sort of thing. Like I say, it's amazing what you can do with this. So I want to show you those. And that's going to give you more of a look of, um, it, I don't know. To me, it looks more, um, one of them looks more Dutch looking. So that's kind of neat. Thanks, Myrtle. Thanks, Carol. Hello, Pam. Yes. So I hope you enjoyed that. And like I say, very quick, almost 20 minutes and that was it. Oh, thank you. Oh, Cindy, you're so kind. All right, you guys. So tomorrow is my mystery and um, I'm going to be a little bit late um, because Monday was um, President's Day down in the States and it was our family day up here in Canada. Our training on Monday, which I do early in the morning on Monday, has been switched over to 3 o'clock my time. So that's usually when I do my mystery. I am going to prolong and, and do it right after my training. And the training is usually an hour long. I will probably be here about 4.05, 4.10ish. And um, I'll be doing my Now What series. Um, I have no idea what I'm going to do. But, um, yeah. Anyways, I hope you do en enjoy this technique. And I can see you doing this lots because I can say if I can pump out a card that quick, anybody can pump that out that quick. All right, you guys, remember to give me the thumbs up, share my video. I really do appreciate it. If you live in Canada and you don't have a demonstrator, I'd love um, to work with you. Just reach out to me. Um, also, if you um, um, can't remember. <laughs> All right, you guys, remember to create because it's great for the soul. Bye for now.